um, for coming today. I know everyone's got kind of a busy, busy schedule, so um, again, just thanks for joining us. We just really wanted to uh, make sure we share more information with our Also, um, sometimes information through social media like uh, WhatsApp or other uh, social media networks can post uh, information uh, that is not official or that's not accurate. Uh, there's uh, a couple of different things going out. Uh, one in particular on WhatsApp, uh, people will be sharing. So if you see information, this is attributed to uh, the Navy in this case. Uh, but you're going to find information sometimes is floating out there on social media. So if you see something that's alarming, but if you don't see that it's coming out of civil defense or the governor's office or Joint Region Mariana's Department of Defense, make sure you're a little bit wary because there's a lot of misinformation and some people might take that misinformation and be acting on it. So if you have any questions, uh, you can always uh, communicate with us. Uh, we are on the social media and of course you can call civil defense or Homeland Security and we can clarify any uh, information. But sometimes you gotta be cautious about where you're getting your sources of information. I, I want to react to the governor's statement and the governor's statement. Uh, the threat level has not changed. I mean, this is unusual. Uh, I want to thank everybody for cooperating with us. Any information that you need from us, uh, please contact us. Governor, what's your uh, reaction to the president's um, comments this morning about um, basically doubling down on what he had said that uh, perhaps he wasn't strong enough? Though I don't like the temperatures to get any higher, I think it's important also that there's clarity and that if there is an attack on any American soil, including Guam, uh, that it would be met with overwhelming uh, response. Uh, of course, he basically said it in another way, but that's basically what the president said. So I don't have a problem with that because we don't want to have any mistakes made and there's got to be clarity. What, I can't believe, I, I don't think there's anything more clear than that. What's your advice to the people of Guam, especially heading up to the August 15 date that was mentioned by North Korea as a, the date that they're supposedly going to send those missiles? I think everybody should continue to, to go as business as usual every day. Uh, from what we have done, and again, we have our homeless, Homeland Security Advisor, uh, who is in constant uh, uh, communications with our local military command, uh, who is also in, 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 in communications uh, with military forces around this region, that uh, the changes, there are no changes in whether what's happening in Korea, uh, or in the Western Pacific, or in Guam. So with that, uh, everybody should conduct their lives uh, it's a weekend. Go out and have a good time. Enjoy the beaches tomorrow uh, and live your lives. Uh, 
information will be made uh, available to all those, uh, and if there are any changes, uh, that will be made known to the public. I think at this point, everyone in the room has my cell phone number friends. So if you don't, then just come up and ask me for it. I have my phone. I would be happy to turn you in. Uh, he's from Japan. テレビ朝日です。テレビ朝日です。カリニー北朝鮮が本当に極みにミサイルをあの周辺に撃ってきたら、どのような対応となるんですか？どのような対応となるんですか？どのような対応となるんですか？どのような対応となるんですか？どの
many of the hotels were built by investors from Japan. Uh, obviously, there's not only an alliance between the United States and Japan, but there's a, a long friendship between the people of Guam and Japan. And I, I believe in the future that this will continue. Uh, as you'll note, there is a major construction effort on the way, and we're a, a realignment of forces from, of Marines from Okinawa to Japan. This is a joint effort where not only the taxpayers of the United States, but the taxpayers of Japan are investing in it. So we are very confident that through whatever adversity that occurs, that the bonds between the United States and Japan and the territory of Guam are going to be even stronger. We have a question in the back of the room. For people who are on the mainland who've never been to Guam, who maybe have family members that they're maybe they're concerned about, are you able to explain, uh, or can you explain, uh, what the instructions are for people that live here and how they will be able to, um, you know, what are their act? What are the action plans? What will be instructions will be given to them as far as keeping themselves safe and their family members safe? Okay. We have fact sheets out and we have uh, a, a website to, that uh, the, the residents can, can access on what to do, all those the, the, the different action plans, the communication plans, the family plans, all that, uh, all that information. And more specifically, are you able to elaborate what those plans are just, you know, for the purposes of video? Uh, what to do in case of a, a typhoon, uh, the uh, provisions that you need to have, Communication plans with the rest of the family members, uh, a whole bunch of things, and they're, and they're available online. Okay. Right, so if you go to Guam Homeland Security, uh, you'll see them, uh, and as routinely as the, as the governor, the lieutenant governor, uh, and the insurance agent have stated, uh, during typhoons, what's normally done is that they'll they'll uh, erect what's called the Joint Information Center, and so a lot of the families of the community here on Guam are very familiar with that, and what we do is you know. We the center, the hub of all information, and most people know to call in uh, if they have any questions. And even family members from Mount Island, because they're directed by our military partners and military leadership, they're, they're, they're able to call in there as well if they have any questions or concerns. The site will be used. Uh, how, what was the last time they were tested, and how often did they get tested? The, the sirens that will be used in quarterly. The quarterly tested? And the last time they were tested was about two, uh, two weeks ago. Was the last time we were tested. And they're in every village? Not in every village. They're in whole lying villages. We have plans to. Hi, I'm Nikki Smith. I, I work for the Daily Telegraph in London. Um, well, that's a long distance. Welcome to Guam. Okay. 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 Are you over the jet lag? No, I actually came from Taipei. So <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. I'm based there, but I work for a London newspaper, so it's not quite as drastic as it seems. Um, Madeleine Bordal has said, um, she said earlier today that uh, Donald Trump, President Trump, whiffed his rhetoric as troops in Guam like a bargaining chip. Would you agree? Like a, I'm sorry? Like a bargaining chip. chip. Yeah. Would you agree with that sentiment? I don't agree. And, uh, obviously, in, in, you know, we're a representative democracy. Uh, there are different parties, so you know everyone is entitled to their opinion. But I thought it was important, and, and maybe the words could be chosen set differently. There may have been a way a President Obama would have said something, or a President Bush, or a President Clinton. Uh, but it was very clear from the statements by by uh, President Trump on the on on the. Uh, on, on the potential of a threat or an, a, 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 the potential of an attack on Guam, uh, that it would be met with uh, overwhelming force. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> but but that, with that, I, as a governor, as, as a citizen, and, and one of the residents of Guam, I think it's important that you're very strong and very clear uh, what the ramifications and consequences is of an attack on Guam. So I disagree with, with uh, with the, with, the, with the representative. Um, you talked about the sirens. How long, like, what's the time frame between a missile being launched in North Korea and it arriving here? Like, how long, like, when would you know, when could you see the sirens off? Like, how long would this have? The calculation is about 14 years. That's just a rough estimate. Uh, North Korea gave us a more time. Mm -hmm. But in our estimation, about 14 years. The sirens, once we get uh, uh, 
notified uh, through our notified channels and federal channels, to get notified in the last 14 minutes that that siren will go off. Realistically, what can you accomplish in 14 minutes? Well, I think realistically, the idea is that, you know, as the governor and lieutenant governor in each state stated, is that, um, you know, the missile defense systems that are in place would ensure that, you know, those 14 minutes that we're seeing. Hey, by the way, uh, there's a difference in Guam and any other place in the United States. Because we have been hit by Category 5 uh, typhoons, we have the strictest building codes uh, in the nation. Uh, I don't know if anybody who visited from our farm and see the buildings here, but even a house that uh, is six, six inch, I mean, it's concrete block uh, with reinforcing bar and some of it poured cement, uh, able to handle winds in excess of 150 to 165 miles per hour. So, uh, you know, the worst case scenario is, you know, for any community is, 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 is obviously a missile attack, especially if it's, if it has a, a, a nuclear payload. And, but I think something like that would be catastrophic and would, would set the world uh, in, in, in uh, basically would, would cause a, 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 a war that would be catastrophic not only to Guam, but to all of East Asia and, 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 and the world. So, you know, we could, we could talk about these things, but you have to understand too, that there's always, there's always the odds of something, but one of it might be a million to one. But I can also say based on what we have in terms of this community, and how we've been able to withstand a, a, a category five events, such as a super typhoon, uh, our, our buildings and our, our, I can tell you we've been a home, but even all our, our, our emergency shelters, such as our schools, are able to hand, uh, handle major uh, 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 events. The category two or category three hurricane or typhoon would cause major damage uh, in, in many communities around the world. It would not in one. So I, I don't want, what I'm concerned is some of these questions that you're asking, uh, you know, we don't want to put fear on the people as well. Uh, for me, I'm a baby boomer. Uh, and as a baby boomer who grew up in Guam, uh, who had to deal with the issues of the Cold War, and any one of us here who remembers those issues in the 60s and early 70s, uh, where there was the the real concern uh, where two superpowers had thousands of, of warheads each aimed at each other. Uh, you know, there was, what was that? A shelter in place and duck and, co uh, and cover. So, you know, that, that, that era is long gone. But at the same time, we have to understand to the dangers that there are today. Um, and with that, uh, we do know that if, if an attack were to occur, you know, there's a certain amount of minutes. And with that, you, you, you uh, have a certain amount of time to, to react. There's, there's been some discussion about a preemptive strike. Where do you stand on that? I'm not here uh, to weigh in. I'm, I'm not a strat strategist. I'm not a military planner. I'm not involved in the geopolitics that is occurring right now. I'm, a, I'm the governor of Guam who's focused on what is in the best interest of the people of Guam, their safety, for those that are uh, tourists that are visiting here, uh, as well as the military families and dependents that are calling Guam home, even for a short period. I think the job of myself uh, and that of the Joint Region Marianas uh, Commander, uh, Admiral uh, Chatfield, is to ensure the safety uh, of all those in Guam. And so uh, I'm not gonna even answer that question on what about a preemptive uh, type of, of or preventive war. Uh, my focus is on uh, ensuring the health and safety of the people of Guam. And, and uh, that's continuing to continue to what I'm gonna be focusing on. Martin, uh, did you feel that uh, Guam is being used as a trial balloon by Trump? You know, like challenging mm -hmm. North Korea, keep Guam and see what yeah. happens? Well, I guess we would say that about Obama since the first threat, threat was made in 2013. Uh, I don't think we should get into the politics of who the president is. Uh, one thing is consistent, whether it has been President Trump or President Obama uh, or President Bush uh, or President Clinton, uh, there's been a long history of North Korea. North Korean threats uh, uh, on Guam and the American homeland, threats 
uh, to Japan, threats to South Korea. Uh, uh, so I, I think that your question should be more suited not to President Trump. I think your question should be more suited to the supreme leader of North Korea, who seems to be make, being very consistent with his father on threats being made. So uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned that some of the folks here in media, and I'm, I'm not only talking local, where it's, it's, it seems to be President Trump is the villain. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very biased. The villain here. Uh, is a leader uh, who is threatening uh, Guam and the United States and South Korea and Japan. Uh, I, that's that's my opinion. So uh, we can you, you can ask me all about President Trump or you can ask me about uh, President Obama. I'm not going to point the finger at them. Uh, it's it's uh, if I can recall, it's been. The leader Kim Jong Un, who has been making the threats of, of, of an attack on Guam, not President Trump. Sean, did you have another question? Yes. Um, in your discussions with uh, military officials, how confident are they that uh, North Korea actually has a missile that can actually reach yeah. the island? You know, I, 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 I this was Admiral Chatfield today. You know, the admiral's responsibility, aside from the defense of the United States and the defense of the Marianas. Uh, she has thousands of, of service men and women and their, and their families in Guam. Uh, the defense threat or the level of threat has not changed since, uh, and I'm talking is when, when the leader made his threat on Guam, uh, the threat level has not changed in the local military command uh, which means that there's confidence by the military uh, that they uh, believe there is no greater threat than there was before before um, the the leader made his statement. So I, I so for that and I, I you know I sit down with the admiral, we sit down with uh, Homeland Security, and they they. Uh, discuss with us the information that is made available in regards uh, to the scenario of an attack on Guam as threatened by the North Korean leader. And as far as they're concerned and we're concerned, based on the information that they're seeing and what is happening in North Korea, what is happening in the waters in the Western Pacific, and what is happening in Guam, that there's no change in the threat level. Okay, we have time for one more question. This is for Homeland um, Security. Some major news outlets are reporting that Pyongyang's statement, specifically naming four missiles or four successive missile launches to Guam, will somehow rough the SAD system or the anti ballistic missile system. Can you speak to that? Will they be able to handle four successive launches? Well, they have to go to four of them before you get to the attack. That's the four zero. Guam Homeland Security is ghs.com. Guam.com. 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 Guam.com.